Big J's beef. Hey guys, it's Big J. And guess what? I've got beef. Well, that's the whole point of this thing. So I'm sitting here in my room, very luxurious. Actually, no, I'm just kidding. This bed is just a little bit better than the one a Klingon sleeps on and it's slanted. So I feel like a freaking Minbari or something. Anyway, we're not here to talk about the sleeping habits of aliens. I'm here to talk about Star Trek Lost in Space. Oh, I'm sorry, Star Trek Voyager. So recently I just finished a rewatch of Battlestar Galactica, uh, the 2004 version, the newer one. And it got me thinking the premise of that show is more of what Star Trek Voyager should have been. And I think what it might have been, except for the fact that the writers of the show were basically wimps and abandoned the premise pretty early on. So to give you just a little bit of background on this thought. So in Battlestar Galactica, there's a surprise attack on the colonies by uh, these robots called Cylons. The uh, ship, bunch of people, other uh, ships that go on the run, basically, a little ragtag fleet. Because it was a surprise attack, basically everyone left with whatever was on their backs in regards to clothing, food, supplies, et cetera, et cetera. So they're not stocked up for any kind of long range trip, right? Okay. So then that takes me to Voyager, right? They are at DS9, have to go run an errand into the Badlands to try to find uh, Chakotay and his merry band of Maquis. So they're not stocked and prepared for any kind of a long distance or um, extended <clears throat> voyage. Just, or <laughs> voyage, voyager. Okay, so they get caught up, gets into the Delta Quadrant, right? We're supposed to be having a finite amount of supplies, shuttles, torpedoes, food, but hey, forget about it. There's no problem with that. Okay, so now unlike in Battlestar Galactica, we had to worry about things like uh, needing to find fuel, needing to find food. There are times where it was shown that there were fuel shortages, food shortages, et cetera, et cetera, water shortage. But Voyager should have been in a very similar kind of predicament, but somehow managed to get all the way to Earth without so much as a scratch on it. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, Big J, they could have repaired the ship every time. And nah, 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 nah. I don't even want to hear it. Not listening to that. There is no way that that crew, that ship gets from point A to point B without so much as a scratch on it. Now, here's why. Reason being is after DS9, now that was Ronald D. Moore. I was one of the producers of D Space Nine was the one that pushed for the serialized storytelling. And he fought with the producers and basically the entire run of DS9. They did not want serialized storytelling. They wanted episode, episode, just episodic content so that they could get their syndication and so that viewers could just drop right in and watch an episode without having to know what was going on before it. So Voyager comes along, perfect premise for a serialized story, but uh, 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 nope, they were not having it. Brandon Braga, Rick Berman kept Ronald D. Moore arm's length away from this. We are not doing a serialized story with Voyager, even though it was prime for that. This is what I have the, the beef on is... Voyager did not make a beeline to the Alpha Quadrant right at the start. They basically spent the first couple of years or so doing figure eights around the area that they were in, probably about within a sphere of, I don't know, half a light year or something like that. That is why they kept running into the Kazon, why they kept running into the uh, Vidians. That's why Neelix knew where the hell they were going. So I think what they were doing was stocking up on food, water, Supplies, okay, sure, whatever. But once they got underway, they still have to deal with some of the shortages, right? No, no, of course not. And naturally, there are plenty of class and planets along the way. And you're probably th thinking to yourself, well, Big J, they must have stopped at these planets and 
before leaving, asked for a sandwich to take some vegetables, some canned goods along. All right. No, don't even start with me. I, I don't I don't see that happening. So that's my beef is I find it very unbelievable that Star Trek. Uh, I'm sorry, not Star Trek Voyager, but Voyager as a ship was able to survive 70,000 light years away and make it home without so much as a dent on the ship. OK, Battlestar Galactica, every scratch, ding pothole, everything always on there. It wasn't a fresh, cleaned ship every episode. Okay. So, you know, if you're going to have a premise for a show, stick with it. Don't just jump ship because suddenly you decide, eh, we don't want a serialized show because that would make too much sense. Really? What the fuck? Where's the beef? We are beyond your podcast. Lower your inhibitions and surrender your years. We will add inspirational and hilarious trip content to your day. Your attention will adapt to subscribe to us. Resistance is futile.